The big question today is, will cooked food kill you? Dun, dun, dun. Sounds a little drastic, doesn't it? After all, if I were cooked, I would be dead. You would put a fork in me. But food, especially vegetables, are not that simple. This is all coming up today on the 40 Girls Guide to Health. So today we're talking about cooking. No time to cover meats and such, so we're gonna stick with plant foods. Eating plant food is the key to optimum health. What is better, raw or cooked? Now, what do I mean by better for you? Well, it's where you get the maximum amount of nutrients and subsequent absorption in the body, because that's the goal. Nutrient absorption, always the goal. So what is raw food? Plant food that has not been heated above 104 to 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Raw foodies believe any foods cooked above this temperature has lost its nutritional vitality and can be harmful to the body. Hence the question, does cooking kill? Well, kind of. Natural plant enzymes are destroyed at temperatures above 118 degrees. Without their natural enzymes, these foods, any foods, are very hard for the body to digest. But there are many more pluses of raw food. Here goes. Number one. Raw food contains lots of nutrients in an easy to digest form, thanks to the enzymes. Cooking destroys not just enzymes, but plenty of vitamins and minerals too. Number two, humans have eaten raw food since the beginning of time, since cavemen, refined the last 100 years, and look at our health people. Number three, raw food does myriad other good things too. Here's the list, fights inflammation, improves digestion, provides more fiber, improves heart health and liver function, prevents cancer, uh, treats constipation, gives you more energy, clear skin, helps you maintain a healthy body weight, and on and on and on. How can raw food do all that? Enzymes, I keep bringing this up. People rarely talk about these amazing little things, so I'm gonna give you a really quick crash course. There are three types of enzymes. Number one, metabolic. Every cell in your body has enzymes that conduct endless metabolic processes. We're dead without them. Anything alive is dead without them. Number two, digestive enzymes. Amylase digests starch in the mouth and protease digests protein in the stomach and there's various pancreatic enzymes that get to work digesting in the small intestine and on and on. Number three is plant enzymes. They're in live, raw food and naturally help you digest the food all the way along, unless you cook it out of them. When you do, that plant becomes much harder to digest. Raw milk also has enzymes which help you digest milk only if it's raw, as does raw meat, and so does every single fruit and vegetable on the earth. You take these away through denaturing the food, pasteurization, or cooking, and they die. Then your own digestive enzymes must do all the work. Well, it seems okay, right? But after years of this, they actually wear out and they don't replenish as well. With a lot of abuse, eventually your whole digestive tract slows down. Foods don't digest properly, and undigested protein particles leak through your compromised gut wall. Inflammation and allergy then set in, and from there, chronic disease makes its foothold. That includes the big ones, diabetes and cancers. No thank you. So maybe now we care about enzyme, right? Raw food? Yes, every single day. Plant enzyme supplementation or digestive enzymes, if you're in the store. If you're over 40 and don't eat raw, then I say absolutely yes, and even if you do eat raw. You may wish you had even started younger. Beyond that, raw food can be so interesting. We think cucumber and carrot sticks, but there are sprouted quinoa carrot crackers, sushi with savory bean butters and sea vegetables, and so on. And it may actually be a little bit hard to conceive when you've been cooking like your mom or your grandma for years, like I had, using mostly the oven and the stove. And that was my cooking education. Unless it was summer, then we'd be pulling cukes and strawberries fresh from the ground. So that's the upside. What's the downside? Well, there's a few things you need to consider. Number one, raw food exclusively is very cleansing and detoxing. You can actually lose too much weight if you do it for too long. Well, I know for me that's not gonna to be too much of a problem, but it's something to keep in mind. Number two, the cellulose and fiber in vegetables is paradoxically actually hard to digest. Cooking helps pre-digest this for us, and it can also make some of the minerals more accessible by breaking some of the ionic bonds. Number three, cooking can be easier and more palatable because we're used to it, and you still get all the macronutrients like protein, fat, and carbohydrate. 
but as you can see, you won't get as many micronutrients like vitamins and minerals. And the fact is without micronutrients, your body can't do too much with the macros. It needs the micronutrients and the enzymes. Number four, if you don't eat meat, then you may need to supplement vitamin D, B12, iron, or zinc, which we get in higher doses from animal proteins. And number five, sprouting and fermenting, which is a very important part of the raw food diet to ensure you get all the nutrients that you need, but it can be difficult and it takes time. Raw food is a learning curve for most of us because it does not come naturally anymore. And the other thing that makes it hard is you need equipment. You need a food processor, a blender, a dehydrator, and more fridge space. So what's the solution? A bit of everything leaning heavy on fruit and vegetables. Be certain to eat raw every single day. If you finish the day with not one salad or piece of fruit or carrot stick or like freshly pressed juice or parsley, you get a fail. If this helped you, please hit like and subscribe. Healthy, happy eating.